Um, we are going to be introducing Misha Johnson. If any, any of you guys don't know who she is, she is a second generational experiencer. She had her first experience at age three. She had numerous contacts and abductions and has been involved with at least seven different alien types, grays, insectoids, mammalians, reptilians, and human looking groups. She has had many MyLab experiences and has been in the underground bases in which, which included a black ops branch of our government and some gray and reptilian factions. She has had two periods of missing time ranging from seven to eight months with which included a missing marriage she has no memory of. So if Misha is here, oh, there she is. How's it going, Misha? Hi. Welcome. Welcome. How's, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. 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 Thank you. And um, any first questions you have for me or should I? Um, yes, my understanding that you have a PowerPoint presentation you're wanting to uh, show, present. So um, we'll turn it over to you and you can go ahead and get started with that. And then uh, when we're done, we'll turn it over to the audience if they have any questions. Okay, um, let me just get to my, move that over. All right, can you see that okay? Yes, it looks great. Perfect. All right, uh, so um, I am a certified hypnotherapist and I specialize in uh, past life experience, regressions with for your ET experience, uh, trauma recovery is a very large part of my clientele because I work with people who have been through the similar things that I've been through, as well as all ET experiencers, but trauma-based mind control, PTSD, ADD, ADHD uh, is my specialties. And uh, I also work with people in support groups. So in 1990, I started the, uh, a support group and I've been doing support groups ever since. Now I've moved to the internet and I'm on Zoom now for the last seven years. I've been in different uh, formats, but now I'm on Zoom and I have nine experience groups. Uh, a, uh, let me just kind of go through the different kinds there. So there's not, there's 12 groups a week and these are all free groups. If you'd like to donate, I, I sure don't mind, but they're uh, three hour groups. Uh, they are uh, the like I have one coming up uh, Wednesday and Thursday. The Wednesday group is a light language group because I speak uh, many different types of light language, many, many, like about 20 or so. And I also uh, have taught it in the past. So then Thursday I have a star seed newly awakened group. And these uh, groups are so dear to my heart because I went through my life without assistance and help and it is so helpful to talk to other people about your experiences so i also have a um, my lab ex experiencer group an mk ultra and montauk a super soldier and secret space program group a target individual group a did and ritual abuse group and a hybrid uh, parent or hybrid themselves group because that is of course definitely something that is real and uh, the last gal was talking about that and to me the hybrids are so very very important to the mission of earth and um i'm going to just go through a little bit of childhood and adolescent experience my mission uh, my hybrid mission because i'm also part of that hybrid program uh, my um support groups i already went through and my galactic uh genealogy, planetary origin. That was a, a new mission that I have. So um, my life started uh, at three years old. I saw these beings, they're little, little furry guys. Uh, I'd hear them in the middle of the night and they would be like little squeaky noises. And then I, one night I finally did see them, uh, three of them right underneath the stairs. And when I grew up, I would, and of course, saw Star Wars some years ago and saw the Ewoks and realized, wow, that is the same ones that I saw. So it's interesting. Um, Hollywood has a few of the truths about ETs in it. 
Um, I also had a, a connection with a willowy one that came into my life at about six years old. So from about three to six, it was, it was the little Bee Gees, the bears, I called them. And they used to take me flying. I remembered flying over the tops of the roof and into the ship. And then the willowy one came in about six years old and was with me all the way into my young adult life. Um, and this one took me through my uh, hybrid program. Also, this one is a little bit involved in the hybrid program and my protection, but I will talk about him just a bit later. So my uh, experiences uh, went on throughout my life. It seemed like I'd have several for a, a, a month, several in a month, and then nothing for maybe a year or two, and then another spree of them, and then gone again. And um, one particular time I was seeing what I thought was one of these grays like this. This is unfortunately my draw art. That's the ability I have uh, of art. But uh, they were little short grays. And then there was a, a tall one that looked more like this one here. Um, and these little short grays would come to my window because it became such a, a, a normal thing. They'd come to my window and they'd look like little deers. And when I saw the deers, uh, I, you know, I would be standing there and I saw the deers and I knew it was time to go. Uh, one of the times during the experience, um, I saw when it looked like a gray, but it looked a little different. So uh, I... I said, ask, can I touch you? And he let me touch him. And he had more of an alligator skin. So I'd say it was probably a reptilian gray hybrid. And then I, um, at uh, 1966, so when I was like 16, I um, had an experience where I woke up and I was standing in a, it was a huge ship above me. It was, uh, I was paralyzed, but I could, um, kind of move my eyes so I saw this the ship and then I felt something very tall behind me I could just feel my senses you know I, I was I'm psychic since a child so um, I, I felt the sense of something very tall and then I was out and the next thing I, I do I was um, on a table and I was being examined by these little gray guys and they I were doing something gynecological, which was very upsetting to me. And I, they, the willowy one, which is this one, um, peeked over and looked at me. He was like at the top of my head and peeked over and looked down at me. And he said, in telepathic, this is necessary for the hybrid program. And I did not know exactly what that was at all at that time, but I did find out later. And then at the same time, just about few few minutes later, there was um, a three beings that were even taller than this tall taller gray, and they were um, standing kind of to the back. Uh, um, I mean, to the to the back of what I'd say maybe the ship, which the ship looked so huge inside, and um, they had hoods on, and I immediately had this feeling of a recognition, like, like you get a feeling of familiarity. And I looked at the one in the middle and I said, I know you, I, I recognize you. And he um, dropped his hood, stepped forward, and I could see it was a reptilian, not, not this particular one, the one I showed you at first. Um, this, and that was, then I went back fast asleep because I do not like reptiles. Never did. I don't like anything about reptiles. So it's very odd that I should end up uh, in, in experiences with them. And this was another experience with a reptile. This was the my lab experience. So I, I drew this picture of where, uh, not, not my gray one, but another one. This one was a tall beige gray. And it was at least, well, I was much shorter, say at least five and a half, six feet tall. I was taken to an underground base. I was taken there many, many times. Um, and uh, so this is just one of the drawings that, that I, I did about it. I was either taken, picked up by these gray beans, um, little short gray beans. So this was another type. Or I was picked up by the reptile here, or like a reptoid. He's more of a reptoid. Uh, or I was uh, taken um, by men in 
uniforms, military. So uh, I asked for help from my, my guides. I said, I, this is very scary. It was going on. My child was being abducted. Um, I was very concerned um, for him because during one uh, of my experiences, I was in an elevator going down the elevator and there were people around me. Uh, there were um, people in pajamas, people in street clothes. I couldn't move my head. All I could do is look at the people in front of me. There was a man standing in the uniform uh, in like camel, uh, only dark black camel um, uniform standing at the door. And then when the elevator door opened, it opened up and they started shuffling us out. Now they kind of shuffled some people this way and some people to the right and some people to the left. And as I was being shuffled to the right, which was two people in uniforms, uh, I saw, and lab coats, I saw my son in the other group who was 13 years old and he was being taken to this tall, same beige type of gray that I'd had experience with. And uh, so that was really startling. And so I asked the guides to please protect my family and myself. And I have had um, a council uh, presentations, or I, I should say standing in front of the council um, and, uh, but this particular time, um, uh, they just sent me this being, he just showed up and he showed up in this beautiful form of energy and light. And every time I would see him, it was absolutely kind and loving and gentle. And, um, I never actually touched him for, until, a, uh, I never touched him at all. And so I didn't know because I thought it was just light. I was taken on board ship a few times. I was taken to um, uh, classes and such that they do that. Uh, and then I, um, one night after many, many, many months of seeing this being, I saw a human looking man and he was very um, blonde, like light blonde, white hair like me. And he was very attractive. And I said, your energy and now you're him. I, I want to know what you really look like. I know you are not this. I know, I want to know. And, and he telepathically said, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? And I said, yes, I am. I want to know. And so he revealed himself um, as this reptilian. And I had known this very unconditional loving energy. So I wasn't concerned about being harmed by it, even though to me, he looked like a snake and I didn't like that. <laughs> But I come to find out that I had had many lives myself as other ETs, and a couple of them actually had been a reptilian, and one of them had been, well, actually two of them, both of them had been his um, spouse. Uh, so I, I knew that was the connection for, for me there. So my ETs have always worked with me and in when I was, uh, I, was, I had the UFO Contact Center International here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I brought in speakers. And one night after a speaker had finished, I always have this kind of an open forum uh, for anybody who wants to talk or what they've seen or what they were witnessed. And this gal was very upset and was talking about her experiences. And um, my galactic said to me, it's time for you to start the group you need a support group for people. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't like groups. I don't like to talk. I'm an introvert. No, 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 no. Then that happened two more times. And the last time uh, this girl was crying about how she can't live in her house. She's terrified. She's scared of the dark. And so I, they said it to me again. Now each time it said it to me two other times, this time in a very powerful, strong voice, they said, it is now time to start the group. And so I stood up and I said, I'm going to start a support group. And that was in 1990. So in 1993, since I had teens who were um, having experiences and they, their friends had had experience, I started a teen group. And it was the uh, 1993, uh, actually almost 1994, I started a group for parents and their children to come in and talk about these young children's and a wonderful way to work with children is through their art. And so we would find uh, ways to 
find out what they experienced, their parents would have them draw art. They'd come to group and then they'd share their art. So uh, in fact, I even, I even encourage the adults to do that as well. So I had no intentions of being a hypnotherapist because in my life, and I'm just going to go very briefly into this because, because you read it, and so people understand, uh, I was born into an MK Ultra family. My father was my trauma-based mind control. Uh, he was the one that tortured me. Now, he also was mind control too, and he had been since he was a child. So it's a, a generational thing that continued on. And uh, within this, um, started about three years old. I think it was really earlier, but I'm, I'm three years old is what I can remember. And um, so I'm going to just jump ahead. Then it continued on and I had times where I was visiting my grandmother for periods of time and she lived out on what they called Asylum Lane. Asylum Lane and Asylum Lane had an asylum on it. And that was a lot more of my trauma-based control training and things that went on there to split my altars. So uh, when they uh, do a, a trauma on you, and I don't want to spend much time on this, but just so people understand, they have to split you. So they'll use electric shock. They'll, they'll use fear. They'll use terror. They'll have people killed in front of you. They will um, use hypnosis. They'll use drugs. And all of these methods are to split you into a, a, a dis, dis, dissociated time where they can then take those dissociated alters and they can um, program, them, program them to do whatever they want. So uh, then I didn't seem to, you know, really remember my childhood ever. So that's really, that's about all I remember of my childhood. Uh, I don't remember my, my senior graduation. I don't remember anything like that because I was under this control so much. And so I believe there was a lot of altars out there living my life as well. And uh, if you have any questions, just pop in if, you, if you're confused or anything like that, uh, fellas. So, um, um, so then let's go on because if people want to know about this, they can read it in a book or I have many uh, YouTubes out there about my own experiences, so you can get into more detail. But just to briefly touch on, checking my time here, just to briefly touch on the um, uh, experience as a young adult at, at uh, 17, I was checking out college. Um, a man came up to uh, a group of my uh, friends and myself as we were there for that college day, and he said, hey, does anybody want to make money to go to college? Because we have a dream study and you can make lots of money on this dream study. Just, just have to go and do dreams. We watch you dream. We, we put you on a machine and we learn a lot about your dreams and things. So I uh, went ahead and did that because I needed help with college. I needed to be able to have some finances. Uh, so I, the next couple of days after that, I would, went into a brownstone building just, just on the edge of the campus, and really still considered on the campus, uh, and um, saw people in lab coats. They, set, they hooked me up and put me to sleep, and that was the last thing I remembered until seven, eight months, excuse me, eight months later, I'm in an, um, across the country in Seattle. I ended up through this time, of which I have my wedding certificate. My family went to the wedding, even though they hated the, the man and felt that I was controlled. I was married. Um, so what this man did was he put me in this, what they call driving program. It is a driving program where they keep you asleep for days, weeks, months at a time. And they also pull you out with your altars and they and your your program trained used and i was ended up using used in the monarch and beta program and that is the sex slave program and that is the program that they're used very highly now um and they even use it in the pedophilia and the trafficking and they use that for people who um like judges and lawyers and governors so that they can blackmail them so those are and I was also a courier. I was many, many, many things. Uh, my, I had uh, four altars that um, 
they had made. Plus, I had some other alters, but were, uh, in the integration system, and I, I was able to integrate them in groups, and I integrated them all. And now I realize how there's so many people going through all of these things, and so I wanted to help other people. So that's really all I'll go into about that, just to help you understand why it's so important for me to help people who have been have gone through all of these things, um, including, of course, the ET experiences. And um, so I spoke galactic language um, throughout my life because I had interface and contact with the ETs. So on more positive experiences, I was in a hybrid presentation uh, and program. And my first presentation was a little bean um, that was kind of put in my hands and cupped in my hands. And I immediately bonded with him. And the willowy one, which is the, the, the tall white one that um, I, I I think I showed you already, but anyway, it was a tall white one, and he, he was there. There was also an, a nursemaid that looked very much like him, and they said to me uh, telepathically, this is a success, and then they also showed me how some people would be very upset about their uh, being handed a baby that looked like an alien with, you know, larger eyes and not quite so normal, um, and they would back off, one man dropped the child, other, other people screamed and ran and, and different things like that. But they were very happy that it was a success that I bonded. And I think that put me in play to be a hybrid parent. Uh, maybe that's not the only reason, but indeed that was one of them. The next child was a little blonde girl, looked very much like her. Uh, her hair was blonde, but um, she, uh, I, I was presented her. Another time I was presented this little fellow, who this was after in the in the uh, 90s, I was uh, presented him, and this was after I had met Ayano, and I'd known that there had never been any physical touch with Ayano, had never had any any dreams, any memories, or anything of any physical touch. One time, I did have an experience where he was hovering above me, about this far above me, and is and. And um, I could feel this amazing Kundalini energy, uh, a very spiritual energy, I might add. And I know that reptilians are not really um, everybody's cup of tea, but there's so many, 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 many different reptilians. And I'm going to be showing you just a few of the different types and where they're from uh, a bit later. So when I went to the nursery, um, I was... Um, saw uh, these children and the children kind of started stepping aside and these children were very, very thin and, and they had the wispy cotton candy hair. Uh, all of them looked uh, different colors and different ways, but still they all had the form, same kind of form and, and size. But in walks this little squad here, a little fellow, and he would look like he was to be maybe um, two years old or so, three years old maybe in size, but yet he still looked like a baby, but he was very big in size. So he looked like about a three-year-old child. And uh, I asked, who? They said, this is yours. And I said, who's the father? And they said, well, it's what you, Ayano, and what you, who you call Ayano and the all. And the all means many, many genetics go into it. You cannot have uh, just... 50-50 genetics. It's impossible in the hybrid program. I'm sure they found that out very early. In fact, I had been told during one of my uh, hybrid experiences that there were some young, older children, and, and they told me that at that time, and of course, this was really early, uh, like, you know, in the um, early 70s, they said that it is hard for them to live past uh, what your teen years are. So, but they were working on this hybrid program. So that's the hybrid program. And this is my hybrid. And then this is my adult hybrid who came to me. Now, I don't know if they're the same child, but this one, um, um, I, was, uh, I was in a, a nursery and uh, the first time I saw him, I was in the nursery and he was in back and there was a lot of other children, different colors, different kind of animal looking beings. This is a very important factor that happens that 
just like we have animals on earth here i believe the genetics have been working since the beginning of time we've had uh galactics coming in and so there's some feline beings and and dog type beings and monkey beings all, all kinds of different beings and um but they were children at all different ages and i said well which one's mine and they they said they all are and that was say something around 13 16 something like that so um very much in the hybrid program that's also why i work with people who um are in need to find out about their own experience this is my own hybrid grandson and i believe that the hybrid children are the future the hybrid children that are coming in now are the most special children they are going to our galactics are putting them into places of importance mili militarily probably in the politics and in and, uh, um, and theologies and and all aspects of life they are being put and they already have been I mean, this little child now is uh, 13 years old so um, the hybrid programs who knows how long it's been going on uh, I, I would say it's been going on for decades to tell you the truth but the ones that are coming in now and the uh, and I have two new um, hybrid grandkids they are uniquely different they're very kind loving very 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 loving and i know i'm sure a lot of other hybrid parents out there can attune to this uh, they're loving they um, they don't quite understand uh other children and the way they uh, you know are mean um i have another grandchild who is not a hybrid and this, the little hybrid little Paul, when they can get together, he just cannot understand her, her actions. I also wanted to tell you that there's also a hybrid program <clears throat> within the government. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've <clears throat> had this um, cough here a little bit. Okay, so um, just to quickly go over this, the hybrid program in, in, in uh, Me Lab, uh, whether it's uh, My Lab and MK Ultra, all the different. Um, parts of it the pedophilia unfortunately the the uh the the targeting i am excuse me the uh, trafficking and stuff these are some of the things that they use the kids for and these are kids that um this young man told me about who had lived this and i know lots of lots and lots and lots of people who have been in these uh, in this the adoption system or been in the cps system who have ended up in these underground facilities being used like these children are and um, so just to go quickly we've got remote viewing we've got time travel we have a hybrid program so they crossbred and i've seen this children uh with animals uh, they're looking for ai information so they crossbred and, and uh, trans transhumanized children and uh, and animals and this is like a little ai a uh, child actually uh, not not a real child more of a hybrid clone um so i think um i'm just going to pass on that one and go right to uh the rest of it so as i said the galactic genealogy uh, is so important and so my galactics uh have forced me to every book i've written i've written uh three books now and they have not forced me but they've encouraged me highly to write these books the first two about my own experience and then this one about the galactics that everyone wanted to know what the galactic planet of origin they wanted to know what their mission is they wanted to know uh, where they came uh where what they looked like when they were living in other planets so I put together this uh, illustrated book of color and um, that helps people a lot because that helps them. I also, at the same time, they wanted me to put a chart together of all the major, like we have Arcturian, uh, Alpha Centurion, and talking Beltrix, Orion, and Lyran, many, many of the different ones, as you can see. And with, with I, uh, a pendulum, I douse for people to find out what their mission is what their planet of origin is of course their mission comes in with the the cards that i do as well so i i'll tell you about those later but so i wanted to get to the 
different types of beings up there here. So we have Andromedans. There's many different types of Andromedans. This is just a couple of examples of people's experience. Um, many of these are from a huge binder I have that people have given me for the years of, of their experience. This is very interesting. These are Apollonians. And the Apollonians um, are a feline kind of race. They have little long tails. They have the ears and such. And as you can see, th they look very much. And this is a picture of the avatar. Uh, but in my book, I have another picture because I couldn't do that uh, of, um, of the avatars. So it's very interesting. I think that the, there's more truth to that movie than they want you to believe. So the Octurians, uh, there's white ones, there's blue ones, there's tall ones, there's short ones of these types. The Beltrexi Orions, you've got um, humans of all races, you've got hybrid races, you have gray, different types of gray races, uh, you have different types of reptilian races that live within Beltrex Orion. The Chiron race is the bird race and was one of the very first races um, after Lyran. Lyran was the very first one to, to, to really, uh, that's like the seat of humanity. That is the start of humans and humanoids. So, but there was the Chirians as well. And the Chirians would come in, vis were coming in visiting back in Egypt and Samaria. And they're in all of history. The Draconians uh, also are, um, there's, in the underground bases, is the best way I can tell you. In the underground bases, I believe that they are working with reptoids, draconians, alpha draconians, because those are two different things, and uh, raptors. Now, I've seen reptoid, raptor, and I'm going to try to briefly tell you I'm not going to have time to tell you about this, but um, just to let you know that one time during uh, my, uh, my lab experience, this fellow was in a room with me and I said telepathically, because I had been used for interfacing for a long time, so I knew he could hear me and I could hear him. And I said, why are you invading our planet? And he sent back this uh, very heavy energy and he said, it's because it's our planet, not your planet. And he showed me a vision of all these dinosaurs and different um, um, prehistoric animals running and running from all these comets that were coming down. And then he also told me that the comets were coming from uh, ships and this was, or, or were actually what they were not coming from ships, but they were detoured by ships. And it was an extinction. It was one of the in extinctions to this planet Earth. And he said many of us that were more intelligent and smaller went underneath ground. And he said, and I am uh, the one I, we have evolved to who you see now. This one was another abduction. Uh, Misha? Um, and Misha, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, just giving you a heads up, we have about five minutes left already. And then, and, and then we, we can turn it over, open it up for a couple questions. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, so then this one I was taken, and it was a very long story, so you can find that out if you want to read my book or something like that. It's, uh, it was a, a scary, and it involved military and lieutenant colonel and other people, so they work with them. So we have Falmahals. So Falmahals have reptilians and all kinds of humans. Now, Iargans. Iargans are a type of beings that are um, kind of a amphibian. Uh, they mate for life. Uh, you've got Lyrans, you've got Lyrans and the, and the uh, uh, a bird race that, that not necessarily is a Chiron race, but it is more of a mammal and all kinds of humans. You've got Mars and Maldeki. When there was life, there was, it was teeming with different types now uh, of this. Now it is more this type and there's other types. There's a mantid type as well. According to the secret space program, there's many different types of, uh, of ET skill there. They are another group of the Orion have more of the unusual types of ETs that came from other universes, all types of greys and uh, humans. The Pleiadians are all humans, different types of humans. The Procyons are Lyrans and Syrians. The Syrians are where the whales and dolphins came from. 
Also, they have all different races, including the reptilians. They have, it's also where the, the myth and where the uh, amphibian mermaids came from. The Chalcedians are uh, many different races, as you can see, many, many, many different. They even have a bear race. It's a, uh, a, a big bears and large. And I think this is probably where my Bee Gees, the bears might have come from, but I don't know for sure. The Tulis and Agathans are the people that live in the inner earth at Mount Shasta and, um, and um, the North Pole, or Anarch or whatever. Um, and then we have Venetians, which is Valiant Thor. And I know everybody knows about Valiant Thor who met with Eisenhower and the Chiefs of Staff back in uh, the 50, 50, uh, 59 to 60s. He stayed there and brought a, a treaty that he wanted to do. He said, if you drop your weapons, if you stop building the bomb, if you stop warring, we, and you can join the galactic, you can join us with, um, you won't, age will be uh, eradicated, you won't age past 30, uh, or I should say, disease will be eradicated, you won't age past 30, you'll um, um, have free energy and all these amazing things, and of course we declined, and instead, put a treaty together with a gray race. Not a Zeta Reticula, but a gray race. And speaking of Zeta Reticula, my being is from Zeta Reticula. Uh, the uh, other groups, this, this is called the Willowy one because he didn't have any bones. Then there's different groups. There's the gray, there's a gray race too. So there's many, 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 many different types of grays. There's many, many, many different types of reptilians. Um, so this is the mantid race, many types of mantis, many types of reptilians, amphibian reptilians, white reptilians, benevolent and malevolent. There's tall whites, which right out here at Creature Air Force Base is, they've been seen by uh, Charles Hall and other people. There's the little short guys, the very strange, other, other strange ones. Um, these are types that have been seen on uh, military bases. These are types that were seen at the casinos uh, here in Las Vegas, where one of the guys in my group took the picture of them. And when he got down to the table after being in the security booth, they were gone. Nobody was there. The dealer said nobody had been at her table, so they can be visible. And inter interestingly, they look very much like the other ones seen in the bases. And that is it.